You are listening to Dispatch Radio, sponsored by theglobaldispatch.com. Well, welcome back to Dispatch Radio. Uh, joining me now is the author of the book, Katrina's Recovery from Mysterious Illness. It's Katrina Starzinskaya. Hi, Katrina, and thanks for joining me so early today. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Great. Did I get your last name right? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, let's start with the foundation of your book, Katrina's Recovery from Mysterious Illness. Uh, essentially, 11 years after coming to the United States from your home country of Belarus, you woke mm-hmm. up one morning in horrible pain, a face paralyzed, limbs were numb. Um, can you tell our radio audience uh, about the days following the appearance of your first symptoms? Yes, sure. Um, I went to sleep totally normal and healthy and uh, woke up, uh, as you said, with half of my face paralyzed and half of my body numb and in pain. And, of course, I ended up in the emergency room. And um, after a few hours, they released me home without any known cause to my symptoms. So I started going from a doctor to doctor, and nobody knew what was wrong with me. And uh, moreover, they told me, most of them told me, um, nothing was wrong with me, and it was all in my head. Uh, one day I was uh, so sick that I was rushed by ambulance into emergency room. And uh, after about 12 hours of testing, I was about to release home again without any known cause to my symptoms, when not even a doctor, a resident told me I could have Lyme disease. And uh, I was so happy for the next 15 minutes uh, before I got home and uh, made my research on Lyme. I was happy because I thought that finally I know what was wrong with me and I was going to take care of it. And um, um, actually, besides pains, uh, that I I had all kinds of physical pain, fibromyalgia, arthritis, um, I had debilitating uh, brain fog, and uh, fatigue. Also, I developed cognitive problems. I would not be able to remember where I parked my own car five minutes ago, or I would not be able to recall my own phone number. And according to the doctors, uh, it was still all in my head. Um, So when a resident told me I could have Lyme disease, I uh, made my own research and I saw that all my symptoms were the same. And later on, um, my blood test came positive for Lyme. And um, I found the Lyme literate doctor and he also confirmed I had Lyme disease. So um, I started taking um, antibiotics that he prescribed me for next two months, and I was told by the doctor that I would be uh, cured by antibiotics, and I was actually getting worse and worse. And after two months, um, the doctor told me, well, if this didn't work, let's put you on five other different antibiotics for another five, six months. And if they don't work, then we'll do intravenous antibiotics. And uh, at that moment, you know, I decided I would not want to experiment with antibiotics. I need to take full responsibility for my health and my disease and um, find a way to heal myself. So I started researching and um, um, looking for people that were able to heal themselves and not just from Lyme disease. But uh, because I could not, I was not able to actually find too many people that were able to heal themselves from Lyme. So I would find people that healed themselves from cancer and AIDS, MS, any incurable, so-called incurable disease. And I found the same pattern in their uh, way to the recovery. They changed their lifestyle. They became extremely strict with their diet exercise, um, also uh, with their mental health, uh, they would meditate and uh, be very positive. Um, So I started uh, following everything they did, and uh, some treatments worked for me, and some treatments didn't work because we are all so different. However, um, it took me about two and a half years of errors and trials, and I was able to recover. And um, I've been symptoms free for the past 18 months. And um, as I, as uh, you saw, I 
wrote about my healing journey in my book. Yes. And now I'm happy to help other people to recover and answer all the questions. Well, that's great. And uh, I'm going to go over some. You you gave a wonderful summary, and I'm going to go over a few of those things in a little bit more detail. But before okay. before uh-huh. before I start with that, though, prior to this happening, um, you didn't even know what Lyme disease was, if I remember correctly. And did, mm, yes, did, did you even remember being bitten by a tick? No, I I have not recalled that, and. Uh, also, because I was living in New York City and I never went hiking, so I would never think that, you know, I would be even bitten by a tick, so I would never even thinking about any kind of tick-borne disease. And, yeah, I didn't know about Lyme because nobody talks about Lyme in a city. <laughs> um, yeah, in the emergency room, nobody even mentioned first time because it was in Manhattan. Sure. Okay, and so in your book... Um you, you're, and you're not alone, many people that are Lyme sufferers are critical mm-hmm. of, of the medical establishment uh, for several aspects concerning Lyme disease. Um, in your view, what's the problem with the diagnostic procedures for Lyme disease? Uh, of course. Well, the first problem is that um, regular blood test comes back over 60% um, false negative. And uh, doctors do not test for any other uh, diseases or they do not see on any symptoms. They don't pay attention. They just uh, rule out Lyme disease at all if a uh, test is uh, false negative. And um, the next test that can be performed is Western blood. And unfortunately, even Western blood uh, does come back negative for about 40 to 50 percent, so that's a lot. Also, um, only Lyme literate doctors um, are willing to diagnose people with Lyme disease and uh, prescribe long-term antibiotics that do help some people sometimes. And all other doctors, they are not willing to diagnose and prescribe antibiotics because they have problems with insurance companies. No, insurance companies do not want to pay for such long-term treatment. Some people stay on uh, intravenous antibiotics from 18 to 36 months. It's like three years of treatment hmm. and no insurance company, of course, wants to cover that. Sure. So the doctors would just say that person is uh, cured after one or two months. And all other symptoms are just psychosomatic and uh, or it's depression or they call it post Lyme syndrome. So um, I think this is the problem, um, um, in, like political side insurance companies. Uh, okay, very good. Um, and ultimately, you were diagnosed with several co-infections. Uh, I think it was Babesia, mm-hmm. Bartonella, maybe, and mycoplasma. And mycoplasma, and it is in. From your experiences, is this very common in Lyme sufferers? Yes, I think um, 99% uh, Lyme disease sufferers do have co-infections and sometimes even more. And, um, yeah, sometimes um, those co-infections, they mutate. And I think every year um, doctors find some new names and some new different co-infections that come along with Lyme disease. Okay, and uh, I'd like to go on to some about talk about some of your symptoms. I mean, I'm looking at your book right now, and you uh-huh. and you dedicate two and a half pages just of a laundry list of symptoms you had, um, talking about uh, bone and joint pain, uh, brain fog. Yeah, uh, I mean, buzzing in the ears. I mean, it's just a, a long, long list. And I guess my question is, you know, the doctors are all saying that you know, early on that this was in your head. What makes Lyme disease so elusive, such an elusive infection, while other bacterial infections are so straightforward? Like if I have strep throat, Mm -hmm. they can diagnose that like in a second. What makes Lyme disease so elusive? Uh, Well, if you have uh, um, other infections, as you say, strep throat, um, you have only symptoms that... uh, covers chef throat, and also your blood test would come positive for that particular disease. With Lyme, again, uh, uh, blood tests come false negative, and all these symptoms, they mimic other diseases, so 
um, the same symptoms would be would go with multiple sclerosis and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome or because uh, all of these symptoms are invisible when i came to see my first doctor i had over 60 symptoms and wow. all of them were invisible to naked eye so it's very easy to uh, blame the patient and to say that nothing is wrong with him and it's all in his head because doctors can see what's going on with you blood tests don't show and uh, you look normal so i think that's why it's elusive because um, most of the symptoms are totally invisible to your naked eye. Okay. And and perhaps the most fascinating uh, part of your book, to me, was the long list of treatment options that you tried after the standard treatment of doxycycline. I mean, these yes. inc- this included acupuncture to regular saunas to bowel cleansing, you know, everything, mm-hmm. el- everything else under the sun. Um, and you say that the antibiotics actually made your Lyme disease worse. Can you explain... That and yes, yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just would like to make a claim that I'm not a medical doctor, and maybe uh, some people are able to recover with antibiotics. Sure. However, as I mentioned, um, I found people that healed themselves and were totally healthy, so I decided to model their program, and none of them were taking antibiotics. And um, antibiotics may be um, really helpful in the short term. However, in the long term, they do suppress immune system a lot, and they ruin the gut flora. And um, also, antibiotics means against life. So um, they they really um, not designed to be taken for a long time because they work against your immune system. And um, in Lyme disease, we need to boost the immune system. And in all other diseases, we need to boost the immune system so it works at optimal state in order to fight any kind of infections. So when your immune system um, becomes sh- become shut down, uh, it's really hard to recover from any kind of disease. And actually, in the long term, uh, people develop all other diseases, even cancer, and uh, it's because of the long-term use of antibiotics. So I think it's really dangerous unless they are prescribed to save some, uh, someone's life in the short term. Okay. And, and just to follow up on that, concerning your uh-huh. immune and concerning your immune system, basically you said the things that you that worked for you were the things that boosted your immune system and removed toxins from the body. Um, so what works, yes. of all the things you listed in your book, and I uh, recommend that people do check out her book if you are a Lyme sufferer or one of the other invisible diseases, um, what worked for you and what didn't? Sure. Uh, first off, um there are so many wonderful herbal antibiotics that have no side effects and they do not suppress immune system and they do not cause bacteria to mutate so you can take them for a long time um, until you kill all bacteria and some of them are cemento, cat's claw, angiographies, astragalus and there are some others. Also um, just plain garlic and uh, um, Cayenne pepper, it's, they are also wonderful antibiotics. Uh, in terms of treatment, I found that hypothermia, which is sauna, um, is, uh, it was the best treatment for me. And um, I recommend to use sauna up to five times a week because sauna creates artificial fever. And we all know when we get sick, uh, we develop fever. And... Um, it's not advisable to suppress fever with any kind of drug because our body is so smart. It creates fever to fight all kinds of infections and viruses because they do not survive in a high, in higher temperatures. So when we create artificial fever while we are in the sauna, our body fights of infection and at the same time because we sweat so much we we detox we detox all these um, neurotoxins that Lyme produce and heavy metals so that's by one treatment we do two great things to our body also I found that ozone therapy works uh, really well and uh, ozone therapy can include drinking ozonated water or also sauna with um, 
this put in some ozone in the sauna, so mm. you, when your pores are open, your body would absorb a lot of ozone. Um, great way uh, to fight Lyme is drive machine. It's a little bit complicated to use, but um, I found a few people that were able to heal themselves just by using drive machine. Also, there are so many wonderful homeopathic remedies. Um, they are uh, they are very different from for each person. So the doctor would see a person's constitution and symptoms and prescribe something. So I can't really name any because it would be totally different for everybody. Sure. Um, one of the most crucial steps uh, on my way to recovery was very strict diet. Um, I became plant-based vegan and was trying to eat 70 to 80% raw. And uh, if a person doesn't want to change their diet, the only thing is a must, of course, is to be sugar-free because bugs are not picky and they, they survive and strive on sugar. And not just artificial sugar, but even uh, natural uh, sugars like honey or agave, um, they also feed bacteria and viruses. So it's very important to go off completely, to go off sugar. Also, um, a person needs to be very free, soy free, and wheat free in order to let your body run at optimum rate and not to feed any kind of infection. Um, next step would be already to drink a lot of water because um, Lyme disease produces neurotoxins and so many symptoms like uh, pains and brain fog and fatigue, they are developed due to those toxins. So we need to detoxify a lot. And as I already mentioned, sauna is a great way and drinking plenty of water. Um, also, exercise is crucial because uh, we, when we are in pain and when we are sick, we, uh, some people are bedridden. I was bedridden for a long time we tend to stop moving at all and it's so important to keep our body moving and to help our immune system also exercise boost the immune system okay uh, katrina i, I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you about i want one of, of the course. one of the therapies you tried and i love to hear about it it doesn't sound like you cared for it very much it had to do with the use of bees can you explain that oh yes um as a therapy <laughs> um that's um that's the way to heal yourself with the um, bite of bees. And epitherapy is very popular in Europe. Uh, they use um, all kinds of bee products um, to heal different diseases. So I did try that. However, it was extremely painful, <laughs> those um, bee, bee bites. So I have not... Um, I have not done enough treatment to judge if it worked for me, but I have done my research and I found people that were able to heal themselves. That's why I tried that therapy and I included it in my book. Sure. I think it could be very helpful. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Um, I guess to to sum up this uh, portion, what is your primary message in the book concerning treatment options? Okay, my primary message would be um, not even start with treatments. First off, a person needs to take full responsibility and authority for their health because we tend to, you know, acquire a victim mentality and blame other people for our disease or we tend to blame doctors that they're not able to heal ourselves or insurance companies, whoever. A first step is, uh, to take full responsibility because not the doctor or herbalist or shaman as interested in your recovery as yourself. Of course. And um, after, you know, you take full responsibility and you know that you will recover whatever it takes, you will do whatever it takes, um, you will be getting much better slowly, day by day. And uh, also... Lyme disease is cheeky, so before it gets better, a person gets much worse, which is called Herzheimer's reaction. So it's very important not to quit and just keep going and to know that there is no overnight cure. However, uh, you need to remember that 
if you give your body proper stimulus, it is able to heal itself. It's designed that way. So just keep going, take one day at a time, and have uh, um, absolute faith in your recovery. Because it doesn't matter what prognosis the doctor gave you, if you are willing to put the hard work and uh, mentally, if you know that you will be, if, that you will recover, um, you will. Your body is able to heal itself, and if your mind believes so, the body will follow. Wonderful. Um, let, let me go on to some uh, recent mm-hmm. news. Um, I'm sure you heard about the recent CDC estimates for Lyme disease that were published. Yes. And it's now saying yes. 300,000. Um, is For you and other Lyme sufferers, is this a I told you so moment? <laughs> Oh, yes, that's I told you so moment exactly. And uh, actually many Lyme sufferers now um, got excited because they hope that, you know, the CDC new numbers will bring more awareness and maybe finally doctors will recognize it and they will not be telling other people that it's all in their heads. So people um, finally will get more attention and more um, they will get treatments, they will get more testing. So, yes, I think it's good news for those who need uh, help from doctors. Okay, great. And in addition to your book, Katrina's Recovery from mm-hmm. Mysterious Illness, uh, online there's no shortage of forums, support groups, etc. for Lyme disease. Uh, for any of our listeners out there that are suffering from this, what advice would you give them concerning picking and choosing such websites? Okay, I actually do talk, I have the whole chapter on online forums, and uh, I uh, I recommend it not to go exactly specifically to Lyme forums, because when I just got sick and I didn't know anything about Lyme disease, I started going to those forums, and what I found that there are so many people that are very negative, and they told me that they've been sick for 10, 15 years, and it's incurable, and you would you would never recover. So they really get, got me scared. I thought, you know, I would be disabled for the rest of my life just like them. And when I start getting better, I start posting my treatments and tell them I was getting better. So they told me that I was a fake, that, I, that they told me, please do not go, do not get any hope to other people because it's not possible. So I do not, I do not even recommend uh, those forums. I would say oh, just okay. find people online that heal themselves that post inspirational stories and are willing to help you, are willing to tell you about their treatments and what they did and uh, their setbacks. So, yeah, there, I don't have any favorite forum to go to. Okay, good advice. Um, uh, recently, uh, uh, the senator in the state you used to live in, um, New York, Chuck Schumer, mm-hmm. he's calling for the CDC to step up their research activities on tick-borne diseases, including Lyme. Uh, I'm sure uh, you agree with him. Yes. And uh, yes. W- 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 what do you think the CDC and others should be doing as far as uh, increasing research? I mean, should it be for diagnos- diagnostics, yeah, treatments? I think it's, it's very crucial to start with diagnostic and uh, um, help those. Some people go under diagnosed or misdiagnosed for 10 years and... Um, after they diagnose, after 10 years, it's so difficult to heal because the body has been fighting off infections for 10 years. The body is so weakened. So the faster you diagnose, the much easier it is to recover and it's possible. So I think proper testing is very crucial right now. Okay. Um, and, and one last question. It's, it's kind of uh, a little bit different, but I did notice in your book that you did have a chapter concerning Plum Island and the Lyme d- disease connection yes. with that, and that's mm-hmm. been a, that's been an interest of mine for several years now. Um, uh, in in thirty seconds, uh, tell me what you think about that. Well, I I had researched the book Lab Two Fifty Seven, sure by Carol. Yeah, I read that and, too. Uh, and then I did my other research, and the island does exist, and they do experiment with all kinds of. Uh, viruses and bacteria, and um, I personally believe that Lyme disease was created on that island, and yeah, it escaped, and that's why it became epidemic all of a sudden. 
So I highly recommend people educate themselves and read that book um, and see for themselves because it's a very controversial topic. However, um, I do believe it was man-made uh, um, complex of bacteria, viruses, parasites, and it was designed to be totally undetectable at the early stages and uh, permanently disabling at the later stages. So that, that's my opinion. Right, yeah. And, and so, so you think it was being made as a biological weapon? Yes, yeah. yes, I do think so. Yeah, you're not alone on that. Several people believe that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, Katrina, we're w- getting ready to wind down. Um, I want to go ahead and give you a minute to you know, plug your website, your business, uh, talk more about uh, where people can find your book and if they want to buy it. Go ahead. Of course. So the name of my book is Katrina's Recovery, and you, they can get it on Amazon or on my personal website, Katrina's Recovery from Lyme. And also, um, I do run health retreats in San Diego, where I live right now. Um, it's a um, seven-day juice cleansing retreat where I practice all the treatments I mentioned. And if people are interested, uh, my retreat is called Health Mastery, and they also can find it online, healthmasteryretreat.com, to learn more information and there is a phone number and contact form, so if they have any questions, they can call us and write. And I always, I, I answer about 100 emails a day. I, I help anybody, so I would answer all the questions and concerns for people. Great. Well, uh, joining me for this past half hour or so has been Katrina Starzinskaya. She's the author of the book, Katrina's Recovery from Mysterious Illness. And uh, Katrina, thanks for getting up so early and joining us this morning. Oh, of course. Thank you so much. Robert. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, um, there, there's no doubt in my mind that there's, you know, especially based on the new CDC estimates that there's a lot of people suffering from Lyme disease. Um, and the information in Katrina's book can, uh, can also be, uh, for other types of illnesses like chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Uh, her advice covers that whole spectrum of quote unquote invisible diseases. Um, let me briefly talk.